today I'm doing a follow-up on a video that I did previously regarding the performance difference in games between Windows 11 and Linux, to be more precise, Nobara 39 on Nvidia GPUs, on this case the 4080 Super. I plan to make this as a series and check the performance every few months, so consider subscribing to the channel if you are considering Linux for gaming in the future. In a separate video I'll do as well for the 7900 XTX. For the comparison, I'm using the latest graphic driver versions at the time of the recording. For more info regarding the test setup, check the video description. The games that I tested on Steam were using the latest stable version of Proton 9.02 and for the other game launchers I used Latris paired with Wine 9.9. When it comes to Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, I had to change to the latest version of Proton GE from Wine 9.9 to be able to run it. For the comparison, I'm using only games that have built-in benchmarks, as I'm not aware of any tool that can do what MSI Afterburner can do in Windows. If someone knows a similar tool for Linux, let me know in the comments below. Keep in mind that I'm capturing video at 1440p at 60 frames and 4K at 30, so make sure to look at the graph to determine if a game has spikes, don't rely on the footage that much. I know one of the reasons I got so many spam texts and calls is because big companies can't keep our data safe. Recently, Ticketmaster was hacked and the data of 560 million users was put up for sale on the dark web. The data stolen includes full names, addresses, email addresses, phone numbers and credit card data. At best, this is going to lead to so much more spam, at worst, fraud. So, what is Ticketmaster doing about it? Nothing. They said they didn't think the hack would have a material impact on their overall business. All these companies happily collect our data but do nothing to protect it. That's why I use Aura, the sponsors of today's video. Aura alerts me when my data has been part of a data breach or leaked on the dark web. It gives me fast fraud alerts if anyone tries to use that data to access my credit or bank accounts. And it removes my information from data broker websites so I get less spam. I also get things like transaction monitoring, a VPN, antivirus, a password manager, parental controls and identity theft insurance. I get this all in one app at an affordable price. If my info was compromised in the Ticketmaster data breach, I wouldn't worry, because Aura is always on, always doing the hard work of keeping me safe. I'm not leaving myself and my family vulnerable to data breaches, and if you don't want to either, you can go to https colon double slash aura.com slash gaming9 and try your first weeks for free, also linked below in the description.
And these are the 1440p results added in one graph. For those that are colorblind, for every game, the first bar shows the frames per second obtained in Linux, while the second one, the Windows 11 results. Feel free to pause the video if you want to have a better look at the graph. On the screen now, we have the average percentage loss while gaming in Linux compared to Windows 11. All but one game, that is Total War Pharaoh, with only 9.38% lower frames, exhibit a double-digit performance loss. The average performance loss across all games tested amounts to 23.71%. It's like the difference between a 4070 Ti Super and a 4080 Super. Moving on to 4K on the screen, you can see the averages in this graph. As expected, there is not much of a difference when moving on to 4K as Linux still trails Windows. And when we have a closer look at the percentage loss when gaming using Nobara 39 distribution, the overall performance loss amounts to 20.96, in line with what we saw at the end of March this year as the average performance difference hasn't changed and back then it stood at 22.69 in the games tested. It seems that over the past few months there were no performance improvements in Linux from Nvidia in order to lower the gap between Linux and Windows 11. That said, you can give Linux a shot even on Nvidia cards, but know that you're losing a lot of performance when compared to Windows and in some games that gap is really big. When it comes to daily tasks, Nvidia drivers work well in Linux. And that's it for this video. If you like the video and like this type of content, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel and drop a comment below. Take care and hope to see you all in the next one.